In today's video, I'm gonna be changing the fuel tank pressure sensor on my 2007 Chevy Suburban. Before I get started, I wanna point out that I am not a professional mechanic. So take everything that you see in this video for entertainment value only. If you're gonna be attempting a job like this yourself, make sure you consult a professional before you get started. Another thing I need to point out is that I don't have the proper tools to really diagnose and troubleshoot an EVAP system. So for this project, I'm kind of working as a part swapper. I did the math and I found out that if I swapped all of the EVAP system parts on this car, it would still be cheaper than if I took it to a mechanic to have it fixed professionally. Now I could try and go out and get the tools that I need to diagnose this properly, but this has got to go through emissions in less than two weeks and I don't have time to get those tools and learn how to use them. So that's why I'm gonna be a part swapper for this project. So at this point, I've already checked and changed the gas cap and the EVAP canister vent valve. After replacing the canister vent valve, I reset the trouble code and drove around so the system would cycle through. And after a little while, the check engine light came back on with the same P0446 code. To get started, I'm gonna drop the spare tire just to give myself a little bit more room to work under here. The next thing I need to do is lower the gas tank. So you can see I've got a jack here with a piece of wood to kind of distribute the weight so that it's not all pushing on one spot. Now that it's braced, I can remove the straps. There's one here in the front of the tank and then there's one back here. I'll use a 15 millimeter socket to loosen and remove these bolts that are on the frame side of the tank straps. The rear strap is off, now I'll remove the front one Now that the bolt on the other end of the strap is removed, I can just kind of twist it and work the tab out on this side to get it out of the way. Before I lower the tank, I've got to remove the filler tube and this line back here. The filler tube is just held on with a regular hose clamp, but of course the head of it is on the top. So I'll use a stubby screwdriver to loosen that up and remove that first. So this fitting is just sort of a squeeze clip. I was able to disconnect the smaller line by squeezing this so these tabs that are on either end kind of lift and separate from the barb and then I was able to kind of pull this apart. One thing I should probably mention is that these zip ties and this cable right here are for an aftermarket backup camera that was added to this vehicle. I'm gonna cut these zip ties just so that this doesn't get stretched when the tank is lowered. It took a little bit of brute force and some twisting, but I was able to finally get this disconnected. Here's another line up near the front of the tank that needs to be disconnected. This is a similar fitting to what's on the back, but not quite the same. There's some squeeze clips on the inner part and I should be able to pull this out. I started to lower the tank, but I realized it's getting hung up on this vent line. I'm gonna need to remove the line and it's one of those squeeze clips, but because of the angle here, I can't get enough power on it with my bare hands, so I'll use a screwdriver to kind of help actuate it and get it popped off. I don't think I had a good camera angle when I was trying to pop that off, but you can see it's free now, and I should be able to lower the tank. There are also two lines on the charcoal canister that really need to be removed. Unfortunately, I lost the clip where I kind of showed that, and this is about the best image I can find in the footage I have. The red arrows indicate the two hoses that need to be removed. One's a little bit bigger than the other, and both use the squeeze clips found on some of those other hard lines coming from the tank. As you may have noticed, I added a second jack here to kind of help control the weight distribution. Now I should be able to lower these jacks slowly to help control how much gap that I leave at the top of the tank. So the tank is dropped enough. I've obviously got room to access this fuel tank pressure sensor now. I can't see it. I'm doing this totally by feel. Now I'd have a little bit more room if I dropped the drive shaft too, but we're going to just go ahead and see if I can do it without dropping the drive shaft. You can see here I've got my hand on the electrical connector. I should be able to pry up on this latch and just pop that off. Now the tank pressure sensor is free. I'm going to kind of wiggle it around here to get it ready to be popped out. Now I'm going to grab this spudger tool and I should be able to use this to get underneath the body of the sensor and kind of pop it out of here. So I'll just kind of gently pry up on this and hope it comes out in one piece. Here's a quick look at the new and old parts side by side. You can see that physically they look pretty much the same, 
just a much newer date code on the new one. I checked the old date code and this looks like it was original to the car back in 2007. Now here's a look at the part number that I used for my 2007 Suburban. I'll leave a link to this down below, but if you're going to try this job yourself, make sure you do the research and get the right part for your car. So I've got the new sensor, and again, I'm working by feel. You guys can see more than I can. I'm going to find where this thing goes and pop it back down in place. So I want to wiggle this thing kind of back and forth to get it to go into that hole, but at the same time, I want to push down as straight as I can on it so I don't break that sensor head off. Okay, that feels about as seated as it's going to get. We'll get it lined up and get the connector plugged back in. So now I'll work on getting the tank jacked back up in place. I'll alternate between my two jacks to make sure everything goes up straight. Before I get the tank jacked all the way up in place, I'm going to reconnect this vent line that's up on top. At this point, I reconnected the hoses that go to the charcoal canister. And once again, I lost the footage showing it. So I apologize for the poor picture, but basically they just kind of snap back in place onto the fittings that are on the charcoal canister. While I'm here, I might as well reconnect these other lines as well. They should just click back together. And we'll bring in the filler neck and get this back on. So I've got the filler neck kind of on temporarily. I'll bring the hose clamp down once this is in final position. This still needs to go up a little bit more to be seated. Up here at the front of the tank, I'll reconnect this line that I disconnected earlier. I'll make sure that the blue tabs are spun around so they line up with the holes that are in the coupling there and then just kind of push this together. Probably need two hands. And there's what it looks like fully engaged. So now I've got that front tank strap ready to reinstall. I'll get it kind of twisted in so it's engaged with the hook here. Now I'll get the strap in place and reinstall the bolt. Now I'll reinstall the rear strap the same way I did the front one. So the tank's all bolted back in place. The filler neck tube is seated where it needs to go. So now I can bring the hose clamp back in and tighten it up. But this time, instead of having the screw up here, I'm gonna have it down low in case I gotta take this apart again. Now that everything's put back together, I'm gonna start the car up reset the trouble code and then go through a few drive cycles and see if the check engine light comes back on. So I've been driving the car around for about a week and all of the readiness monitors have now turned green and I don't have any more trouble codes and the check engine light is off. As I said at the beginning of the video, I'm not a mechanic and as such, I'm not real familiar with all of the different readouts that a machine like this has. But in doing this project, I learned a little bit about some of the functions <laughs> that this has. Now, before I started this project, I had my scan tool in the car and I was keeping an eye on this data feed. And no matter what, it always stayed at 0%. It never changed. Now that I've replaced the fuel tank pressure sensor, I'm keeping an eye on this and I'm noticing that as I go along, the pressure does change now. It doesn't stay at zero. As you can see right now, it's at 14.5 and climbing. If I switch over to the main screen, you can see that all of the readiness monitors are now green, so the system is fully up and operational. There's no trouble codes reported on the scan tool, and the check engine light is off. I took the car through the emissions test this morning and got a pass certificate. So replacing that fuel tank pressure sensor solved my problem.